Hello everyone, my name is Isaac Somerville. My presentation covers landscape designer Olivier Philippi and his unique take on the Mediterranean garden named uh, the Dry Garden. First of all, it's important to note that he, uh, Oliver, was, when he was a boy, he grew up near Paris with no horticulture background at all. Um, he eventually dropped out of university philosophy to follow his true passion, which obviously is plants and uh, landscape design. Uh, Oliver nowadays is more settled down with his wife, Clara. They run a very unique nursery located south of France. The nursery specializes in drought tolerant plants. Uh, here, this image is just a quick idea, kind of the feel that this landscape design style gives off. Uh, we'll get more into it, but um, just like to talk about Oliver for a little longer first. Um, he was a pioneer in irrigation free gardening in the Mediterranean region. He creates landscapes full of texture and color that change as the seasons progress, uh, while they still retain their harmonious structure throughout the year. Uh, Oliver uses his knowledge of plants to create Mediterranean style gardens, which are usually fairly dependent on irrigation, not always, but usually there's some kind of irrigation involved. And he takes them, makes them not only irrigation free, but also low maintenance. And uh, who doesn't like low maintenance? As for Oliver's background, he started to research in the 1980s at West Dean College of Arts and Conservation in Chichester, which is just a city located in the United Kingdom. Uh, since then, he's traveled back to the Mediterranean and similar climate regions around the world to study plant adaptation in dry climates. Um, not only is he well known for his research and his famous garden, he is also a photographer and author of several books, three or four, I believe. Um, he lectures frequently on dry gardening techniques and design inspired by Mediterranean landscapes. Uh, the images here down in the bottom left is just his best-selling novel, The Dry Gardening Handbook. And then on the right is an image of the college's main, kind of main building. Uh, next thing to talk about would just be Mediterranean gardens in general. Uh, originally made famous in France, Greece, and Italy, Mediterranean gardens have now spread to many gardeners worldwide. There's a lot of interest shown um, with their soft colors, gravel walks, brightly patterned tiles, clipped hedges, informal and drought tolerant plants. Uh, it's becoming, like I said, more and more popular around the world. Typical plants you would find in the Mediterranean gardens include an array of succulents, uh, typically yucca plants, other things like that, um, Italian cypress as for trees. Uh, these plants are then complemented by small rolling hills and the loose kind of gravel walks to get around. Uh, if I go back to this slide here, you can see on the right there, those three taller columnar shaped trees, those are the Italian cypress. And if you look closely, you can see a couple of what look like yuccas. They're kind of amongst the shrubs there, kind of low lying. And they look the most like a succulent out of anything here. Kind of have those long stems with the unique looking flowers at the end. Uh, famous designs. Oliver. He isn't as well known for having like an abundance of super well-known prestigious designs, but rather he's well, more well known for his field of research, which of course is Mediterranean plants, gardens, and landscapes. Um, but the accumulation of his knowledge can be appreciated in his own nursery, the one I talked about earlier that's ran by him and his wife. It's in Lupin, France, and it's called Pepiniere Philippi. Um, Oliver and his wife created the garden, I think now over 32 years ago, and it's often referred to as the Mediterranean garden of the future. Uh, that just refers to the technique he uses with all the drought tolerant plants put together, um, makes it so you don't have to use an irrigation system. Uh, also 
noted here, all the pictures of landscapes and gardens used in my slideshow are all taken from the same garden that uh, Pepiniere Filippi. Here's another image of the garden, his most famous. Um, it's really, it's really big. As I said, it's connected by all these little gravel paths and it's more so made to look kind of have a natural feel to it than anything. And really just display how you can have an array of plants that are drought tolerant without having to worry about irrigation or minimal maintenance, minimal maintenance required. Uh, the conclusion, kind of the part here where I have the most to talk about, um, I would say that Oliver's biggest contribution to the world of landscape design so far has been popularizing the use of water-wise garden. This idea, kind of what I've talked about before, where you can just take drought-tolerant plants and plant those, meaning you won't have to use an irrigation system, and you can still achieve really nice effects, really really um gorgeous looking gardens without having to worry about including uh plants from other regions that you might have to keep a closer eye on or maybe water um like i said he uses drought tolerant plants that are typically native to the area um it creates an irrigation free landscape this is not only good for the environment and for saving water uh it also helps Re to reintroduce native plants, which is just good for, you know, the local wildlife, pollinators, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, it's not only super low maintenance, but it also, in my opinion, looks great. Uh, these gardens are rising in popularity in areas like South Africa and Southern European countries where Mediterranean gardens were originally popularized. Um, they're showing up both in residential and commercial design. And it's even starting to catch on in North America, specifically Los Angeles, Nevada, those kind of hotter, sunnier regions where this type of design would be um, more well fit. Here we have two more images, another picture of the man himself here on the right. And then just, again, another picture from that original garden. Uh, one more additional piece of information I'd like to add is this guy is very French. There's actually not a lot of information out there about him that's written in English. Um, most of the articles I found were written entirely in French. So it made it a little more difficult to um, find exactly what I was looking for. But altogether, really cool ideas coming from coming from him and I learned a lot doing this project and I feel pretty inspired after seeing what he's been able to do with an open mindset putting in these drought tolerant plants no irrigation system needed and um, one thing that I did find off a French website is a direct quote from from uh, Oliver and what he says is that it's important to not focus on using irrigation systems and water because in the future we um, will not have water available to us so he's referring to climate change climate crisis that type of thing just being ready for that and being able to adapt just like the plants that he researches um, <clears throat> just have a few sources here and I think that's about it Thank you for listening and have a good rest of your day.